have none other than me doing an amazing unboxing for Kat Von D. Enjoy. It's probably been since about 2010, 2011 since I was excited for a collection to arrive at my doorstep just so I can put it on immediately and share it with you guys. The fact that we just found out that Kat Von D has a new independent parent company aside from Sephora means that they are now vegan because Kat Von D is a vegan and of course being a, a vegan I want to support a fellow veganista um, run her business no matter how big or how small and I've always just loved Kat Von D because she's never apologized for how she feels what she thinks her workmanship is amazing and she knows what unique people or people looking for different things really, really want. But if you remember the very beginning of my channel, I was a huge fan of the Kat Von D Trooper Eyeliner. I use that in every single video. It was my favorite eyeliner. I have loved the color wheel for years and so it's been five years since I've touched Kat Von D, it's probably been five years since I've had a color wheel palette, so I really feel a huge blast from the past being able to pick up today's collection. I really feel that Kat Von D has changed and arranged her collections to better suit a wider variety of people, because not only does she have the neutral palette via the Monarch palette, but even this impressive color wheel of a palette contains fantastic, impressive transitioning and grading colors. So not only do you get the full color wheel, you also get a gradation sampler. And it's already been stated that this is the size of a record book. That's a very impressive palette for $59. It is 24 shades, and each shadow is 1.1 grams. And you usually get about 16 shades for $50. So for about nine more dollars, you can go ahead and get about nine more shades uh, and at a very good weight as well. Man. And it doesn't even end there. The fun doesn't even end there. You can grade and mix your own shadows because this is, after all, a color wheel. Is the color wheel itself on a, on a cardboard backing? Now, one thing I do like about this palette, because I did purchase color wheel palettes in the past, none of which have ever been very sturdy at all, most of which are on cardboard. But what I like about this one is you can slide a little spatula under them quite easily. There's obvious visual room you could see it you could see it and you pop those out if you are a pro artist and go ahead and pop them into a z palette because i know off the top of my head that these will not be makeup artist friendly if you want to grab all these colors and go on a nice shoot with these now if you're somebody who bought this for the limited edition packaging for personal use like myself and you just happen to be a makeup artist who also is a makeup junkie then this is just fine. One less thing to purchase. I don't need to purchase a Z palette. I love the artwork on palettes. It inspires me. So it's not just something I look up as just taking up space. It's also inspiration. I feel you can also use palettes as artwork on your vanity as well. I will quickly point out the ones I am wearing today. I am wearing Lyric on the arch, the brow bone, and the inner corner. I'm wearing Legend on the inner portion of the lid and the crease. I'm also wearing analog in the outer corner of the crease and the outer corner of the eye. From there I felt it, the look was not quite deep enough and I decided to pull Vox, which is a deep warm chocolate brown from the gradient section. And I love that the gradient section is not black and white like it usually is in a color wheel palette. Moving on, I also used dark wave underneath the eye. And then I went straight into synth and brightened it up again. And then I went straight into Hyper Ballad and then I brightened it up some more. Once I put all the concealer on under my eyes and really helped brighten up the eyes because some of very colorful looks can flush out your natural skin tone, I felt that the area under the eye was not blending into anything just the way I like. So I went ahead and I took Noble, which also happens to be an everlasting lipstick color and a studded lipstick color, and I went ahead and I put that 
right underneath the blue just to help it blend into my skin tone a little softer and I felt that was an excellent decision. So don't be discouraged or don't feel like you are going to look like Rainbow Bright. You can stay in a family and you really just have an all over really good palette. I find these palettes more valuable than getting a Coastal Sense 88 because it also allows you to mix and match and play with colors that also have interesting finishes and undertones. When you get a Coastal Sense palette, you can either get a matte or you can get a shimmer. There's even more colors that are on the natural color wheel itself. You can go back and blend, but like I said, you get a vivid array of color, grades, and finishes. To recap on my look, I went for the face chart because I really wanted to evaluate how these looks looked because I do know a lot of people go to the face charts and see what they can create because we all need that inspiration when we have a new palette. Okay, what's good in here? What does the brand recommend? And usually you'll be able to depict favorites right away by looking directly at the brand's face cards if they do come with it. I looked at Dark Wave. And I was like, I like it, I dig it. That green under the eye is so me, and I've been wanting to do green under the eye for a week now. But what I really liked once I finished it was it came out really beautiful, but I wanted to darken it up, so I simply added Vox myself because I thought, now that orange would look really cool if it's just a little bit more burnt. And moving forward, I probably am going to do Misfit real soon because I just can't handle all of that purple and burgundy underneath the eye with the green lid. It's fabulous. So I'll probably do that next and then I am gravitate to purple so easily. So I'm going to try to work out of my comfort zone before I play around with that one. I found the colors very blendable and smooth and worked like a dream really. I found the palette very fun. When I was working with it this morning, it just made me smile. The colors jumped out at me. I'm going for a more alternative rockabilly look. So the fact that the person who designed this palette for us is a tattoo artist who gave us a broad spectrum of colors, loves a pinup look herself, loves an alternative look herself, loves to do pinup tattoos, is known for that. Of course, I gravitated straight to this palette and decided to get completely out of my box to know about is the palette, the swatches, the color names, and it really gives you a better feel from the palette. Molder, which is a nice vanilla color. You have Noble, which is a matte mid-tone brown. Tim Talley already did a really good job swatching all these, so none of us are going to stack up to her swatches, so I will put a link for hers down below. Goals. I don't have the camera technology she does, so that's why we're doing that. This is a frosty white iridescent color that has a hint of a pink and a silver sheen. The next color is Lyric, which is the color I'm wearing now on the arch of my brow bone. If you can't see what I'm wearing, it is kind of like Max Vanilla Pigment. It's got a pink iridescence to it. Strutter, which is a slightly more cool toned, almost like a milk chocolate, a glass of milk chocolate that didn't get enough chocolate into it, that's the best way I can describe that color. So that is Strutter. The next color is Vox, and I feel I don't have to swatch that for you guys because it's already in my outer corner, and you're not going to wear it the way it would look if I swatched it. You're going to wear it like this, obviously, because I put mine on using high impact color. I feel I don't need to swatch black metal aside to show you the opacity. Opaque beautiful and opaque. The next color is Swoon and this is a matte pink. Almost reminds me of Mac Sushi Flower or Simply Marlena from Makeup Geek or Mug. The next color is Destroyer and this reminds me of a matte watermelon red. I'm very certain Mac has a color just like this. Vibrant eyeshadows. That's a cult classic that no one buys but I'm pretty sure that's in the Mac family. You can also use these two things as blushes. You can get a small stippling brush in there by taking it, squashing it, or even getting a little stippling brush and just lightly tapping over it. So if you don't like those colors on your eyes, try it with white or neutrals or even black eyeliner and dress it up a little bit. You won't look sick like a dog if you just play with it uh, and find what works for you. The next color is Rewind, and this is your classic shimmering cranberry red that all the gurus love during the holiday seasons. And if you're new to watching YouTube, don't worry, you haven't missed anything. You will see at least 5 million 
Cranberry Shadows tutorials this holiday season. And no, I'm not making fun of anyone. That's just a reality. The next color is Harpsichord, and it is a copper color. This looks like Makeup Geek Vegas lights or even MAC coppering, but it swatches like a dream and is a true copper color. No joke, you can use this all over the eyelid as a one eyeshadow look, and you can even do green eyeliner underneath. That's my favorite way to use MAC coppering. I think I saw a MAC artist do it as a face chart once, and I fell, I fell madly in love with coppering. The next one in here is Analog, and this is a burnt orange color, and I think MAC even makes this exact color, and it's called Burnt Orange. I'm trying to dry them off, but that is a matte orange. The next color in here, it either says Tran or Fran, I can't quite tell if that's a T or an F, but that is a shimmering lemon color, vivid lemon. The next color in here is Legend, so if you can't quite see that on my eyelids, that's Legend all by its lonesome. But like I said, it does take on a different look when you blend other colors into it. The next color in here is a whole lot of fun, and it is Vinyl. I don't know if I would have named that vinyl, but it is called vinyl for whatever reason. It looks like lime to me. But that is vinyl, and this is probably the most sheer of the eyeshadows I've swatched. It's even more sheer than Legend if you consider the color family. The next color is Misfit, and it is a sheer green with silver and very, very iridescent green flecks in it. The next color in here, Lemmy. I'm not sure, but this looks like Max Club. Gorgeous. Love it. To die for. Gorgeous. So out of the three greens, Lemmy is the winner, but I definitely think I can work with vinyl. Hyper Ballad. That is on the outer corner of my eye. For those who can't see that, here is Hyper Ballad. And it is almost a matte green. You can't pick up the iridescence. You actually, you can't pick up the iridescence in any of the matte colors when you wear it, but they actually all have a slight sheen. So they almost remind me of the ink lock colors where there's that slight sheen, but it doesn't transfer. And then the next color is synth, and that is blending out um, dark wave on my eyes, under my eyes. So that is synth, and it looks like max chromographic blue they have a chromographic line at the pro stores and that looks like they're seeing and it's a gorgeous under eye blue the next one in here is called dark wave and that is the dominant color underneath my eyes and of course i've had to use the lighter colors and noble to blend out this pop puppy but i found it a little patchy in practice so i would use it as an accent color and not as a lid color right. and the next color is echo and this is an iridescent purple and what I really like about this iridescent purple is the pink sheen in here. Just fan fabulous. The next color in here is called Muse, and it is a delicate lavender with a pink undertone to it. It's Muse. And the last two colors, we have Anthem, which is a fuchsia with purple undertones, strong purple undertones, and that is buttery. <sighs> Tap, don't drag. And the last color is called Love, and it is a total mom pinky purple color. <sighs> Tap, don't drag. And those look gorgeous blended into each other, in maybe even into the cranberry as well for a holiday look. Anyways, I really like this palette, and I think it's really, really awesome. And for those of you wondering, in the next upcoming video, I'm going to be talking about Mi Vita Loca studded lipsticks. And I am wearing Noble today, but I want to play around with those a little bit more before I talk them over with you guys. So far, the amazing black lipstick in here is the one I covet the most, and it is called Neon? Neon? Neon. Uh, Novute? I don't know. But it's a new color. But whatever name, I don't care. I love the color. End up liking all of her stuff. I'm gonna get the Monarch palette and the Underage Red because those have been on my list forever. 
but I really, really like what I got um, as a new taste back into loving, digging, and buying Kat Von D. I missed her stuff so much. And I did get some awesome VIB Rouge things as well. The Nirad Facial Kit, and I got the Bite Limited Edition Luscious Cream Lipsticks and Lush Fruit Lip Gloss in Mimosa. Hope to see you back. I'll see you guys later. And we will... Um, do some tutorials with this look. Let me know if you want to see this look, another face chart look, because uh, uh, the face chart is awesome. And welcome to my crazy YouTube channel and my crazy life of seeing cruelty-free brands go and come and go and come and come back. So here we are. Till next time.